Hello friends and fans, and welcome to Wine and Canvas Indianapolis Online. My name is Bird, and I'm going to be your instructor. And this is the beautiful painting that we're about to do. But before we get started, let's go over a few things just to make your job at home a little bit easier. The first thing is, is our apron. Typically in the studio, we provide aprons to everybody to try to prevent any paint from getting on their clothing. And the good thing is, is we just recently started providing plastic aprons in your kits. If you did not receive one of your aprons, we're sorry, but we probably delivered your material to you before we got our shipment of aprons in. Now, if you don't have an apron, that's perfectly fine. You can wear older clothes that you don't mind paint getting on. The good thing about this is, is, even if you do get paint on your clothing, it will come out as long as you wash it within 48 hours. Now in the studio, I always tell everybody to make sure that if you get paint on your clothing, go home, throw a little shout on it, give it a slight scrub and throw it in the washer. And as long as you wash it within 48 hours, it will come out. However, if you don't wash it within 48 hours, it won't come out. So be very cautious. And if you get paint on your clothing, Make sure you get it washed out before it stains your clothing because the last thing that we want to do here at Wine and Canvas is to ruin anybody's clothing. If you have an apron, go ahead and put your apron on. And if you don't have an apron, make sure you go put something on real quick that you don't mind paint getting on. Just pause the video and go and get your apron on. I'm going to put mine on right now while you guys are putting yours on. Okay, so now we all have our aprons or our older clothes on and we're protecting our clothing. So the next thing that we wanna go over is our paint brushes. For this painting, we're gonna be using four brushes and everybody should have received four brushes in their kit. Let's go ahead and pick those brushes up now. At Wine and Canvas, we refer to our paintbrush by number. Number one is our smallest brush. This is your fine point liner brush all the way up to number four being our largest brush. So we have a one, two, three, and four brush. So if I tell you guys that we're gonna use our number three brush, go ahead and pick out your number three brush and hold them up to your TVs. I can't see them, but I bet you that you guys are all holding up your number three brush and you're actually ready to start painting. But let's go over a couple more things first. The next thing is our water cups. We did not provide a water cup for you guys in your kits. So you guys are going to want to go ahead and get a cup. Now, this could be any kind of cup. You can use a styrofoam cup, a paper cup, a plastic cup, a mason jar, or even a cup from your cupboard. If you're using a cup from your cupboard, don't worry. Just like with your clothing, as long as you wash it, it will come out. It's acrylic paint and it actually is pretty forgiving. So go ahead and get you a cup of water. Make sure that you fill it at least halfway up with water so that way you can dip your paint brushes in. And once you get your water, go ahead and take those four brushes and set them upside down in your cup of water. Okay, now let's go over our paint. Everybody should have received a paper plate with little cups of paint in your kits. This paint is the paint that we're gonna be using for our painting. Now, the way I would advise for you to do this is, is leave your paint in your cups and only pull enough out of the cup that you need to actually do the part of the painting that we're gonna be working on. So I'll pull a little bit of paint out of my cup, apply it onto my paper plate, so that way I can mix the water in with it or mix any other colors with it that I'm going to need to actually achieve the color blending that we're going to have in our painting. And the very last thing that you're going to want is your wine. This is wine and canvas after all. So it's not wine and canvas if you don't have your wine. We do have wine and we actually sell wine and beer and we'll deliver it to your home with your kits for any future class that you actually do with us. All you have to do is let us know that you want our drink menu and we'll be happy to send that over to you so you could choose whatever drinks that you want while you're doing a class with us. Now, if you have your wine, 
let's go ahead and have a toast. Thank you all for joining in on our class. We're going to start off with our number four brush. And we are going to take some white. And we're going to bring that white coming at a left angle from the upper right hand corner coming down about three quarters of the way down on our canvas right here and all i'm going to do is pick up some white and go in and just put that on there There's no rhyme or reason to this. We just wanted to put that white on there. And we're going to go now with a tiny little bit of blue, put that on both edges. Just a tiny little bit of blue. Not a whole lot. I'm going to go in and I'm going to very lightly start to fade that blue and white together just like so using a little bit of water on the tip of your bristles will actually help this go a long way see how we're getting that nice soft transition that's what we're looking for we don't want a color and then it immediately stops and starts another color we want this nice soft transition like I got right here so I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna smooth this out That's nice. I like that a lot better. Now, we're going to go in with a little bit of purple on both sides of our blue. I'm going to do this just like I did my blue. First, I'm just going to put a little bit of purple back there. Maybe even just a little bit more. I'm going to do this on both sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit of white. I'm going to put that white right on the edge of my blue and then immediately just start going in and fading it together. Since we put that white on there, it's going to actually make it to where the purple is lighter against the blue. And as it comes over, it's going to get darker and darker. Now you're going to want to go ahead and wrap your paint onto your side edges as well as your top edge while we're painting. The last thing you want to do is just to finish your painting and realize that you forgot to do this. It's not the prettiest thing when you hang your beautiful painting up on the wall and you got these big bold white edges. So make sure you go ahead and wrap that paint onto the side edges.
Now because my blue has already begun to dry right here, I'm going to go ahead and remix a little bit of blue right there in that same area. So I'm just going to put a little bit more white. Make a little tiny drop of blue. And then just like before, I'm going to go in and I'm going to start fading it in. Now, notice how it starts looking like it never dried. That's what we want. We want to prime it over into our purple just like this. go back into the very center with a little bit of white just to brighten that up one more time so just a little bit we'll fade that out on both sides And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a little bit of black. I'm going to put a little bit of black right here on the left-hand side, just a little bit. And then some up here in the upper left-hand corner. Once I get to the point where I got a little bit of space between our purple and our black, I'm going to go ahead and pick up some more purple. This time, the purple won't be mixed with any white. I'm going to fill the rest of that area up with just a regular deep purple. And then I will fade it into my light purple and then up into my black. Once I get done with one side, like I said, we're going to go over and 
I'm gonna put just a little bit of this black. If we put too much, it's gonna start dominating all of these other colors. And we don't want that. Nor do we want to put a little bitty black dot on there like I just did on accident. If you make a, li a little mistake like that, that's fine. I know somebody used to call those happy mistakes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a brush with no paint and just a little bit of water. I'm going to go in and just kind of scrub that out. Just like that. No harm. purple has begun to dry over here so when I go to do this I want to go ahead and add a little bit more white against my dark purple so that way when I fade it together it'll start turning into that light purple again just like we did with a blue up here down here into the bottom and we're going to create the color for our ground and we're still going to use that number four brush and to do this I'm going to start off by go ahead and taking some white and some water and filling up the whole bottom area I want to go to where my white is going just above where we ended 
our sky. So that I'm using water and a little bit of white. Don't gotta put a whole lot on there. I'm just gonna go fill up this whole bottom area here. So we're gonna create this color of our ground right there on the canvas. So now I'm going to put a little bit of blue, just a little bit of streaks here and there, doesn't have to be a whole lot. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the tiniest little bit of black. Just a tiny little bit of black, here and there. Now, I'm not going to do my fade like I did up there doing these little X patterns. Down here, once I rinse my brush out, we're just going to go from side to side to start blending this. So I rinse my brush out. Now, with just the tiniest little bit of water on the tip of my bristles, I'm going to go start going back and forth. Just go back and forth and let all those collars kind of blend themselves together there. Now, if you want to blend it a little bit better, you can go ahead and do it just like this. But once you get done doing this, like we were doing up top, you, you want to go back and forth and just smooth all that back out. The idea is, is we're looking for a color that is almost a smoky blue. So. It appears as though I need a little bit more black on here, so I'm just going to go put a little bit more black streaks. Once again, fade all that together. That's better. Now I do want to have my highlighted area mostly down here in my lower left hand corner. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little bit more white. I'll focus a lot of that white down here. And then I'll go back in and I'm going to just do some white streaks. And fade all that together. If you want it to be darker in some areas, go back in with a little bit of blue. And then put a little bit of black on top of it. And darken those areas. You want to continue to repeat these steps until you get the ground the way that you like it. Once you get it the way you like it, you're going to want to let this thing dry for about 10 minutes. So during the course of this break, go ahead and pause your video, do whatever you need to do, and once your painting is dry, go ahead and press play again, and then we'll continue on our painting.
and you'll know it's dry because the paint on your canvas won't look glossy. If it looks glossy, then it's probably still wet a little bit. Acrylic paint is typically flat, so it won't have a little gloss to it. So go ahead and just pause this after you get done with your crown, and then once your painting dries, press play and we'll continue on with our class. Okay, everybody, welcome back from break. The next thing that we're going to do is, is we're going to go start creating the shape of our Stonehenge. To do this, we'll use our number three brush. And we're going to start off with just black. So I'm going to take my number three brush, pick up a little bit of black. And I'm going to start over on the left side. And I'm going to go approximately three fingers over from my very edge. And I'll place a little bit of black dot right on my horizon line there. 
Now, from that black dot, we're going to go ahead and pull up a little bit. And it doesn't have to be straight. I'm actually wiggling my brush a little bit. So I want the edges of these stones to look a little rough and ragged. They've been there for thousands of years, and so we want it to look that way. Alright, now I'm going to put another little stone on top of this one. So I'm going to make it look like it's coming out a little bit on the top. And maybe on this side it kind of comes into a little bit of a point. Just like so. Now next to this, I'm going to come down just over halfway. I want to bring a stone, maybe that big boulder right here. Now behind this guy, we're going to have a taller one. This will be one of our tallest ones of all. So let's go up to about a little bit over the height of the first one that we've done. like that. Now yours doesn't have to be identical to mine, but you still want to have around the basic shapes. Maybe we got another little stone just right there, just kind of peeking out on the edge. And we're going to leave a gap, and we're going to come over and we're going to add another stone about half the height of the one that we just done, that tall guy there. Then we're going to do another one, leaving another gap in between this stone and the next one. The same height as the one that we just got done doing. Now I'm going to go leaving a gap once again between this stone and the next ones. And I want to make these ones, it's going to eventually be two, but right now we're going to make it look like just one until we go put our highlights in. But I want to make it almost as tall as this one over here. Not quite though. And the top of it, I'm actually going to angle to the right and down slightly. Just a little bit. Now the width of this is almost the width three times of our number three brush. And next to this guy, we're going to add another one, kind of peeking out from behind him, not quite as tall.
and you'll be able to differentiate between each one of these once we go and we put our highlights we just want to start off by putting the black on there and then while we're working on some other things and the black dries we'll go back in and we'll add our highlights here in just a few now let's go to the right side of the one that we just done and let's make it to where it looks like there's another couple of stones just kind of peeking out right there. Alright, once again, let's leave a gap between this one and the next stone. And I'm going to make this one a little bit taller than the one that we just got done doing. Then let's leave once again another little gap between the stones. And let's make this one the same height as the one that we just got done doing. I want to make this one a little bit fatter. Just a little bit. And then let's get a little crazy with this last one here. I'm going to kind of curve it in and make the thing come up. It's a little bit taller than the other ones. Once again, I'm giving it more of a downward angle when it's coming to the right. And the next thing I want to do is I got some stones that go horizontal. So I'm going to go in between or right above these two stones right here. And I'm going to add a little stone resting right on top of those two. Just like that. I'm going to do the same thing resting right on top of these two shorter ones but going from this tall one over to this tall one then let's go put some stones down here on the ground right under these two let's go put some long a couple elongated stones just like that maybe we got a couple more over here let's go put another long guy right down there on the ground maybe it was put there on purpose or maybe over time those stones have fallen off from decay of the other stones. And I'm going to go ahead, using just the corner of my brush, I'm going to go in and put some little bitty rocks here and there all over the ground down here. doing this I want to add some grass blades down on the ground to do this 
I am going to use my number three brush. Some watered down black paint. And I am going to make sure that I pull my brush on my paper plate on both sides towards me to where it'll flatten out my edge just like this. We want that edge to be flat. And then I'm going to hold it to where my bristles are vertical. And I'm going to touch my canvas and just flip up. This is going to allow me to go in and start adding these little grass blades here and there. Now you don't want to press hard. So I'm barely touching my canvas and flicking up. I also want to, while I'm using this black, I want to go in and I'm going to add a little bit of a darker horizon line, simply by taking my brush and just going back and forth. I'm going to do this on both sides. You can put as much of that grass down there as you want. It's totally up to you. I don't want to put a whole lot. I just put the indication there's quite a bit of grass down there. But I'm not overly doing it. It's totally up to you on how much you put. Once you get done with this, all of your stones, your grass, even the little bitty pebbles all over in the ground, 
going to rinse your brush out thoroughly because the next thing we're going to do is go up into our sky and we're going to start adding our stars. Now there's a couple ways that we're going to be doing our stars. The first way is a fun way and I always enjoy doing this but just know in the process of doing this that it can get paint everywhere so you want to make sure that put a little sheet or something up in the background like I have here to capture the paint even a newspaper or just set it down flat on a surface to do this next part that'll wipe up the paint if you accidentally get paint on something it will come off just like we spoke of just a few moments ago in the beginning of this class it will wash out as long as you wash it within 48 hours Now to do this next part, we're going to still use that number three brush. The only difference is we're going to want to water down our paint to where it's super, super runny. And we're going to use white. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white and some water and mix it right up on my plate. And I got it so runny where you can't even really tell that it is on the bristles. The bristles are still the regular color that they are, but my white is translucent enough to where you can still see them. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take our paintbrush, hold it with our thumb and our middle finger, and then we're going to take our pointing finger and we are going to pull the bristles back, go up to our canvas, and release it and it's going to fling paint onto the canvas now you want to do this mostly into your darker areas I'm focusing putting a whole lot of stars on mine because it's a galactic painting. So don't be afraid to just go in there and keep putting some of these stars. We'll call them star clusters all over. Just make it look like a, a nice galaxy up in there. If you get white on your stones, that's fine because we're going to go in and we're going to start adding our highlights anyway. So that'll, that'll go away. But before we go down and do any of the stones, I want to go back up into my sky. I'm going to go ahead and rinse my number three brush out. And I'm going to pick up my number one brush. And with that number one brush, you can get your bigger stars. Let's get a little bit of white on the tip of our bristles. And you're going to go in you can add those bigger stars wherever you want. And in my original, I actually had some shooting stars. To do these, 
we're gonna do our this the very center of the star just like we were with our bigger ones here using a number one brush put some paint and then we're gonna just run a tail or a line coming off of the rear end of that star to where it looks like it's been shooting So choose wherever you want them. I want this guy right here. And I'm gonna take a little bit of my white and a little bit of water. And I'm gonna stretch a line coming around. Maybe that thing's shooting from all the way over there. That's a long, long tail behind that thing. And let's go down and put another one right here. Why not? That's the little brother of that one. He's a little guy. Now we're going to go back to our number three brush and we're going to go up into this area right here and we're going to just use white starting off and we're going to start creating our moon. So I'm going to get some white on my number three brush and I'm going to go right into this area right here and I am going to make a circle. And it's up to you on how big you make your moon. You can make it smaller, you can make it larger. I didn't want to make mine too big on this painting, even though I enjoy doing larger moons. Because the focus of this painting is not the moon, but the Stonehenge itself, as well as the galaxy scene. we get done with putting our white on there and to get a better perspective if your moon is circle simply step back from it about five feet and then step forward again when you step back it's going to enable you to see things that you wouldn't see while you're right up on your painting I want to go ahead and get my circle looking a little bit more circle I had to step back to see and I like that a little bit better now once we get done filling our moon in with white we're going to go ahead and rinse our brush out and then switch to our number two All right, so we're going to our number two brush. And with that number two brush, I'm gonna pick up a tiniest little bit of blue. And I'm gonna go to the right side of the moon. And I'm just gonna start doing these little bitty X patterns like we did in our background. And then just start pulling it into the white. It does not have to be the whole area. We want it to look like there's craters in the moon. So, see how I'm doing that? I'm just leaving like these little indications. Well, a little bit of blue here. Uh, maybe let's put a little bit of blue on the left side. Okay. 
Maybe we got one of those craters coming out right here. Just like that. If you feel like you got too much blue, simply go back in with a little bit of white. There's no harm in it. I just want to give the indication that that moon's up there. You can put whatever detail you want into it. I don't want a whole lot of detail into mine because, like I said, I don't want the moon to take away from everything else. Once you get your moon to the way you like it, we're going to go ahead and still use that number two brush and we're going to come down and start doing the detail in our stones. I'm going to start off in the center with these guys right here. And like I said earlier, I want it to look like two stones with one setting on top. Now to do this, I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white and I'm going to start pulling my brush down. Let that brush skip here and there. Just let that thing skip. first indication of our highlights done and we'll add a little bit more but that's pretty much all there is to this I'm just touching my stone and pulling down I'm not pressing hard I'm just touching and pulling
The last thing I'm going to do to my stones, I'm going to go in, I'm going to add my brighter highlights. So I'm not going to use a watered down paint. Instead, I'm going to use just a regular white paint with no water on it. And I'm going to go into mostly the top of every one of our highlighted areas. And I'm going to brighten it up using just a regular white. Just like that. I want it to look like the top of every one of these is capturing a little bit more light from our galaxy up here. Now once you get done with your stones, go over everything else. Make sure there's nothing else that you want to do. If there is, you're going to want to do that before we continue to sign our painting. Signing your painting is typically the last thing that you do. and You don't want to do anything after you sign it because signing it gives the indication that it is finalized. So go over everything. Figure out if there's anything that you want to touch up. If there is, go ahead and do that. And then after that, to sign your painting, you're going to use your number one brush. And you're going to choose an area that you want to paint it. Typically, artists will sign the lower left or right side of their canvas. You can sign it in either one of those areas. I'm more fond of signing my lower right because I'm right-handed. To do this, I'm going to choose a color paint that will not clash in the area on where I'm going to sign it. So, for this case, I'm going to go ahead and use a white paint. Because I like the way that my stones turned out. And I am going to sign my painting. And that's it.
and I wasn't that fun. I want to thank all of you for painting with me today. I hope you had fun, and I hope to see you in one studio one day painting with us or tune into another one of our future classes. Now, if you had fun and you liked this video, please scroll down and click on like and subscribe to our channel so you can be updated on all the stuff that we have going on with Lion Canvas Indianapolis. You'll be the first to know of any new changes that we have. And trust me, we have a lot of new positive changes coming and you'll be the first to know. So subscribe below and please leave us a comment on what you think that we could do to make our videos better and your time with us that much more enjoyable. Also, please send us a picture of your finalized painting at our email address below. We would love to see how your paintings turned out. And once again, everybody, remember, we're making memories one painting at a time. Bye.